Talking to me? Right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Council, Terry Quesada, CIP manager. Oxbow and Pauline Street, which is one of our oldest projects on, on the listing. Uh, we continue coordinating with a term mud. Uh, as a matter of fact, staff met with them yesterday. Their project is slightly delayed due to um, uh, delivery of their materials. However, they still expect that they will complete their line installation by April of 2022. So we're working to uh, be ready to piggyback on, not piggyback on it, but follow their project um, so that we can begin the, the paving and the drainage improvement. Municipal facilities phase one, we're working on the final stages of the application. We need to submit a projection for capital improvement projects, so we're working on that so that we can finalize the finance, uh, financial feasibility study and submit to the USDA. Um, and then there will be a, a series of steps that the council will need to take to uh, finalize the process uh, to include the final review of plans uh, by the USDA. And again, you've seen the, the rendering of what we expect that this facility will look like. Golden Eagle Park, uh, Council will continue working with the contractor on this project. Um, as we've been reporting, we've reinstituted weekly meetings. Most of them are face-to-face -face because we believe that's the best way to do some problem solving as we're looking at the issues that have come up. Um, this week, uh, the, the contractor is working on a drain that will drain water from the pump. The pump is at a position in the park where it has flooded at least twice. And so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Once that is completed, then the contractor will bring an electrician and bring the manufacturer of the pump so that they can assess what the damage is before we even begin uh, repairing, discussing the repairs to the pump. Um, the sod, we made a, a, a determination that at this point, or at least when we began the conversations, it was not the prudent time to replace or redo anything with the sod that, that we have identified as not being up to uh, the specifications. So uh, we expect that in the spring we can do some work on the sod and that Again, brings that up to the design specifications. Uh, Corky Park, the contractor and construction manager had a final walkthrough. Um, they are, the contractor is working on the punch list items. One of those are repairs to hairline uh, cracks on the, the park, the skateboard park. Uh, so that will require for the specialized contractor to come back and make those repairs. 
um, that we've had a good experience with this contractor. We are, however, experiencing damage to the irrigation heads. There are ATVs that are entering the park. Um, I understand that staff has had to ask these people to leave, that uh, motorized vehicles are not uh, should not be on the park. We're looking at installing signs so that public knows that that's not an appropriate use at, at this park. And we're also looking at a phased acceptance of this project, again, given the, the repairs to the skateboard park that have to take place. And you have uh, what that looks like. Uh, we've gotten an updated uh, scope of work and fee for Benton Riderwood Dog Park. And so we're still planning to re begin uh, design of uh, this project um, in, in this, uh, this year. Uh, regional Park, you've seen this before. We are uh, collaborating with the Economic Development Corporation. Uh, they have contracted with Pinnacle to perform a feasibility study that will take all of these uh, analyses under consideration and provide recommendations to the EDC and to the council as to what the next steps should be and whether or not uh, mm -hmm. a recreational facility that is something beyond a park that meets the local needs is financially feasible. So that's something that we can do. We expect that uh, this is a once in a generation type of opportunity, uh, so we want to make the, the right decision for the kind of park and the facilities that will be at that location. Uh, we're still evaluating ADA transition plan statements and qualifications, but we expect to bring a contract to you uh, at the March meeting. Uh, as far as the street maintenance program, uh, the striping on Darrington was completed. Crack sealing continues, and uh, the contractor is well within the time frame to complete this project, which is April of 2022. They faced some, some weather-related delays because the temperature has to be at a specific level for them to continue uh, performing the work, uh, but they're well within, within the contractual requirements. Uh, we're reviewing the available funding to develop the pipeline. Uh, Bro again is one of the projects that we will be using street maintenance funds to to finance. Finally, an update on federal and state funded projects in North Darrington reconstruction. We expect that we'll get environmental approval. This is a big milestone uh, for project development. I realize that it's not a particularly visible milestone. In project development, no dirt gets turned, uh, but for federally funded projects, this is significant because this is what authorizes the entities that are implementing these projects to go forward with property acquisition, they go forward with uh, final design, uh, so it is a significant milestone and we expect again that we will get that at the end of this month or early in March. Uh, the project construction has been shifted to fiscal year 2023, we reported that before. Um, and that's again to allow us to coordinate with the utilities and with property acquisition. We continue to work with TxDOT and their design team um, and their utility coordination. We're having monthly meetings uh, on overall uh, utility coordination. We're working with Texas Gas Services uh, for an encroachment so that we can have a dual left turn lane at the intersection of Darrington and Horizon. Um, and we're working with the HR MUD. They don't, they have facilities, as the council is aware, on Darrington, on North Darrington, but they have a lot more uh, facilities on Horizon, and that is presenting some challenges, so we continue to work with the consultant and, and HR MUD to coordinate those. Um, and again, we've, we've talked about uh, the next steps that, that the town will have to take uh, as far as the process for acquiring the parcel for the storm sewer installation and for the, the drainage plant. We have two safety projects where we just kicked off uh, the design and that's South Darrington Safety Lighting and North Canazo Safety Lighting. Uh, TxDOT will be designing these projects for the town to meet the deadlines, are pretty aggressive deadlines. Um, and so the the years that you see at fiscal year 2022 is accurate. It'll be um, an award or a letting of late <coughs> fiscal year 2022, August. Um, however, um, there are delays in project starts uh, due to long lead times for the lighting fixture poles. Um, 
um, we were advised just last week that it's taking about 120 days or just giving the contractors 120 days at the beginning of the project because that's just how long it's taking them to get the poles. So this is not something that's unique to Horizon City or to these projects. It's just what's being experienced in the construction industry right now. Um, I wanted to highlight the public involvement meetings for the MTP development. This is the Metropolitan Transportation Plan through the Metro uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, and so you'll see that one of the meetings happened last Thursday. I'm not sure how well attended that was since that's the, the day that we had weather day. Uh, but there are several other meetings. Uh, this is for the public to submit their comments. So again, please feel free to, to look at, at the plans and, uh, and voice your, your support for Horizon projects. The projects that are on the, the long-term plan uh, North Darrington is, a, is on, on the long-term plan because it has to be there in order to be on the short-term plan. Um, but the two the transportation projects with the TOD, Dilly, Delake, and the Transit Plaza are also on the plan. Um, so again, we ask that you uh, take a look at this if you have the time. Now these two slides, the two following slides, you'll notice are very different format from what we had uh, what we usually report. And um, late in February, uh, staff received a request from uh, Congresswoman Escobar's office. Uh, they're making a, a presentation for the implementation of, of the newest transportation bill. And uh, what she requested from municipalities is give us your top priority projects um, and how will the, these federal funds help your specific community. So we, um, we made very busy slides because we had to fit a lot of information into two slides. And we highlighted three projects that uh, we believe follow the guidelines that council has provided to staff. And that's North Darrington Reconstruction. We have a funding gap in this project. So although the design is ongoing, uh, we're still looking for funds to get, get it built. Um, so we provided information on that. Um, the estimated project cost is $25.4 million uh, in 2022 dollars. And as we just reported, this will be built in 2023. Um, so we provided them the location, the, the cross section of what the street will look like. Uh, the second project that we emphasized was municipal facilities phase one. Uh, even though this is coming through USDA funding, again, we wanted to make sure that the Congresswoman's office and, and Congress in general and, and the administration understood that this is another transformative project for Horizon City. And then we, uh, we emphasized the transit-oriented development, the TIRZ that the town has already created, what it will look like, some of the renderings. These are not new graphics for the council. Um, but we wanted, again, to put in as much information as we could. We wanted to share with you what we had uh, submitted over to the Congresswoman's office. Um, later on your agenda today, you have uh, the award of the TOD architectural guidelines. Uh, we have an agreement with Able City for your consideration. Um, and we are happy to discuss that when, when that item comes up. And the other TOD update is that we have a very short turnaround time for the 2022 race grant. Uh, you may recall that we submitted an application in the summer of 2021. Uh, we went to a number of partner agencies, uh, the HR MUD, the EDC board, ARMS, uh, the County of El Paso, uh, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, and asked all of them for their support. This is round two. We're going to do the same thing. Um, we're going to refresh our application, make sure that, that we highlight how the project does not only the things that we've talked about for the town, but also meets the, the, the policy um, priorities for the federal government, because it does. For example, access to jobs, um, access to uh, minority uh, populations. And so sometimes we don't think of those things. But certainly we want to 
let the, the rest of the U.S. know that this, this is a transformative project and it's a good use of federal funds. So subject to your questions, uh, and it's not January 8th, but uh, subject to your questions, that's very important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I have, a, I have a question. Oh. Regarding Perfect Park, can we go back to the rendering of the park itself? <coughs> I had a couple of questions. One was regarding the playground that is the new playground that you see at the bottom there on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a playground there? Because I don't believe there's a playground now, unless there was one within the next past week or so. I haven't seen a playground. I've just seen the slide. Um, it's just a long slide. <laughs> yeah, that and that's there's a slide. And I thought there was some some playground equipment that we highlighted in a previous presentation, but I will double check. Yes, that was that was the main concern because I've been asked about that. Okay. We are going to be adding that playground on. Okay. okay. Then the other question was, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember from our meetings that we had regarding the park, but were we going to add a concrete slab from the Oz to the park itself? Because right now you can't get through there. Right. It's not it's not handicap accessible. I don't believe so that I don't was part of the scope. We talked about anything like that. And I don't believe that was part of the scope. Okay. I'm not sure if, yeah. I believe we were, we were limited to two within the boundaries of the park. Yeah. yeah I didn't remember that as being part of the scope. <coughs> well, I think in the future we need to look at doing something in that area, just the in between. Because mm -hmm. um, as you know, we have our senior center that's mm -hmm. part of our tree lining and a lot of, you know, you know, individuals that, whether they're handicapped or not, it is difficult to walk through there sure. without having them. Sidewalk, so I think that's something we can look at in the future. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Okay. Hey, item number eight. Uh, this is a presentation on a presentation by Shell Soul Medical Center introducing the new CEO. We have Mr. Art Vatsan, named the Chief Executive Officer of the Soul. Medical Center. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Aldermen, Council members, and community members. My name is Art Garza. I am the CEO of the Soul Medical Center. I started this role just a few weeks ago on January 10th. Las Palmas del Sol Healthcare System is part of the Hospital Corporation of America. It's a family of hospitals, approximately 180 strong throughout the country. I've been employed by this organization for 30 years this coming April. I'm extremely proud to be appointed and accept the position of the CEO of Del Sol Medical Center. Prior to that, I served in Brownsville, Texas. I'm a native of Brownsville uh, in different leadership roles and um, in prior to that in Houston, Denver, and Nashville. Uh, having arrived in the city just over a month ago, I've enjoyed exploring the many amenities our community has to offer, and I've been greeted with kind smiles and open arms of wonderful people of this community that have a great sense of pride and ownership. I've explored the different sectors of the greater El Paso area, and I'm proud to announce that within the next week or two, I'll be moving into a beautiful home just a few blocks from here in this community, and I'm excited to start a new chapter of my life with my wife in this amazing area. Uh, as this Del Sol Medical Center's Chief Executive <clears throat> Officer, I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to thank you for your support and your trust in our healthcare delivery team. Last year, Las Palmas Del Sol Healthcare System hosted over 24,000 hospital admissions, over 89,000 ER visits, delivered over 4,500 babies, and cared for literally thousands of our friends and family members that were impacted by COVID-19 uh, COVID virus. And we're incredibly humbled and honored to care for this amazing community. Over the next couple of months, I plan to ask the City of Horizon leaders to help me and my team better understand the ways in which we can be better partners to this council, to this team, so that together we can plan for future growth, economic <coughs> development, and of course, the provision of healthcare uh, for those that we serve. 
I'm excited about the opportunity to serve on these different communities, or committees rather, and I look forward to working closer with all of you and getting to know you better. With that said, uh, I promised to be brief. I simply wanted to come before you and uh, introduce myself to you and let you know that you now have one more friend, a new one, at Dulce Medical Center. So with that said, thank you very much for your time. Hi, good evening everybody. Good to see you. First of all, thank you so very, very much for last year's parade. It is just what we needed. It was wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Um, I am asking permission for this year's parade, but I'm not sure we can do it without Chief. <laughs> I'm not sure it's going to work. but. Oh, thank, thank you so much for everything you've done for us, always, all through all these years. It's just been amazing. Thank you. Uh, December 3rd is our uh, perspective date for the parade. So December 2nd would be the uh, Christmas tree lighting. And we're just asking permission of the council and everybody if that is acceptable with you, please. Second. Yes, yes. May I make a suggestion? Sure. My name is Terry Cullen, and I'm the legal counsel. I'd like to recommend that we have an uh, an agreement to document what the in-kind services are, just so that people will know that there's not a gift of public funds. It's not unusual, um, and then that way we can come back to council, and the council will know exactly how much is being spent from the various departments and. Um, it will protect your organization and okay. it will protect the city council. Sure. And I would uh, like to work with you and staff so we can develop that and bring it back to council at next month's meeting. Fine, there's thank there's you. A motion, there's a motion and a second still stand. Yes, just for the request. For the request. Yes, just for the And I am proud to say that we were able to do the 75 turkey boxes here for Horizon City, plus because some of our members are live in El Paso, we were able to do an additional 50 boxes in their areas also. So we're just, we're thrilled with that. And thank you so much because that's what we do the parade for. Well, thank you, Judy, and I appreciate all the work that you do. <laughs> I just had, I had to give up being Mrs. Claus, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Renteria? Aye. Duran? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Corral? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Ms. Thank you so much. Item 10, discussion action, that the town of Horizon City acquire software licenses and an annual maintenance slash software subscription for the standard Questica budget book standard CFE add-on from Questica uh, LTD, and that the mayor be authorized to sign the documents on December 17, 2000, the documents to the December 17, 2019 agreement with the standard Questica budget book with the standard CFE add-on. Good evening, Mayor and Council, Pat Ranleo, Finance Director. That was a long introduction for um, a piece of software that we would like to acquire. What this uh, software will do, it's an add-on to our current budget software, and it will help us produce a better uh, document and also be able for us to be able to um, archive stuff better. Yeah. Approve the motion to approve them the or any further questions from the council? If not, please call the council. Um, this is also discussed in action that the mayor be authorized to sign a five-year software license and support agreement 
Communications with Bonfire, Interactive LTV for the Bonfire e-sourcing software for municipal procurements for an annual cost of $11,500 using Texas Department of Information Resources contract DIR PSO 4363. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, just a brief uh, review on this package. Uh, this software package... Sir, a PCO said so, I'm sorry, I apologize. A PCO said so, we're getting it. Yes, purchasing it. Thank you. Sorry about that. So this software will enable us to go from manual mode as far as using spreadsheets, work process, and we're going to continue using work process here. And uh, to automate the request for proposals, tracking critical deadlines. Um, one of the things that this will allow us to do is basically notify key players in the process of acquiring services or, or product in a timely manner, I'll be able to evaluate bids, tabulate the results, and, uh, and be able to have basically a reported uh, body of information there in case there isn't some kind of, a, of a, um, a complaint by any of the vendors that have participated in the proposal, we'll be able to submit that. Just so you all know, this, uh, this software was originally uh, quoted out at 16500 but they gave us a, a one-year discount. But after we reviewed the DIR contract that we have, along with uh, some negotiations, we were able, able to reduce this down to 11500 per year, which is a cost savings of $20,000 over the next five years. So we were able to hold that price, uh, that cost for that software for the next five years. That includes three users, along with contract management. That means once we lock in with a proposal and converts into a contract, we'll be able to monitor that contract over the next five years or whatever length of term of services that we're agreeing to. Uh, also, this software package is not new to El Paso. UMC, the hospital, Children's Hospital, uses that UMC <coughs> along with El Paso Community College. When I contacted them and asked them for a, a referral as far as what kind of information, they all had positive, uh, positive comments on that. They were really enthused about that. Community College, uh, you know, I'm not gonna quote the person's name. They said, yeah, we went from manual mode for doing it for 50 years to automation. It was a really good package. So my request to you, Mayor and Council Members, if you all would approve this proposal uh, so that we can sign and move forward with the implementation phase. Uh, I do have questions. Uh, yes, sir. Can you uh, implement this right away and you can use the software? Yes, um, we're gonna be working on that. Yes, I mean, it's not like we have to wait. We just have to basically provide the purchase order and move forward with the implementation phase as far as identifying the workflow, the process of where it's gonna go. Most of these uh, requests for proposals, they're generated with the, starting with the scope of work from each department. We, we encapsulate that in the document. We review it, it goes back and forth a couple of times and then it goes through legal. So that's one of the things that uh, we're, we're incorporating. But within that feature is there was also a timeline. So it's like, hey, what's going on with this proposal? Boom, we can take a look at that and see where it's at or where it's stuck for whatever reason. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for that uh, presentation and uh, a lot of hard work to, you know, diligent hard work as a savings, not just to the community, but to everybody. You know, I appreciate that. I make a motion to approve. Thank you. Thank you. There's right now that cost includes three users that we have. It's for the bonfire e-sourcing, the actual package, the implementation, the setup, and the training, and that includes the contract uh, setting up the contract, and that includes for three seats, so three individuals. So okay. let's say we drop down that would be a reduction of, of 4500 okay or if we increase it then we would have to add that chart yes are there any further questions from the council please follow the council Miller? Aye. 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 thank you mayor mm -hmm. Councilman. thank you thank you <laughs>
being a portion of Section 31, Block 78, Township 3, Texas and Pacific Railroad, uh, Railroad Company surveys uh, Town of Horizon City, El Paso County, Texas, south of the intersection of Canazo Avenue and East Lake Boulevard, and authorizing the location of the change on the official zoning map of the city, providing for the following findings of fact, repealer severability, and proper notice of hearing. Item number 14, this is the public hearing um, on the second reading of an ordinance adopting a zoning change within the municipal limits of the town of Horizon City, Texas, rezoning one parcel from PUD to C1, containing approximately 4.944 acres, uh, being a portion of Section 31, Block 78, Township 3, Texas and Pacific Railroad Companies, Company Surveys, Town of Horizon City, El Paso County, Texas, north of the intersection of Canazo Avenue and Horizon Boulevard, and authorizing the limitation of the change on the official zoning map of the city, providing for the following findings of fact, repeater severability, and proper notice and hearing. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Michelle Fadio, Planning Director. public hearings for the two rezoning requests along Canazo Avenue. Uh, parcel one is just uh, just under nine acres in size and it's north of Horizon Middle School. And parcel two is just under five acres in size and it's south of Desert Hills Elementary School. The original request was to rezone from PUB planned unit development to C2 commercial. However, due to their proximity to the schools and surrounding Residential development staff recommended to the Planning and Zoning Commission that they be rezoned to C1, and the commission agreed, and so their recommendation to council was to rezone to C1, uh, not C2. This is the future land use map. This is what staff needs to refer to when making uh, recommendations on rezoning. So the areas in question, in accordance with the future land use map, call for medium residential and high density residential. Now, neither of these will provide that. However, uh, the surrounding developments and that the Canazo corridor does have a significant amount of commercial, so this is consistent with what is existing and what is coming forward uh, along Canazo. This is the aerial map of parcel one, which is the um, 8.7 acre parcel. And parcel two, which is the uh, just a slightly smaller than five acre parcel the location of parcel one and the survey. This is the preliminary plat that is subject to the approval of this rezoning request. This was uh, recommended for approval at the last city council meeting. And this is the location map for parcel two, the survey, and the preliminary plat that was approved also subject to the approval of the rezone. These are pictures of parcel one, you can see here that the required signage was installed on the property notifying the public of the rezoning case. Uh, it does still read C2 because that was the original request. This is looking south on Canazo. The bottom picture is looking north and you can see the existing commercial development. This is across the street. There is some existing uh, single family residential and then uh, further north it is vacant but there is a C2 frontage with a planned residential uh, zoning just beyond that, and then beyond that entire Tuscany village development, there's existing single family residential. Parcel two, there's the sign looking north. Uh, you can kind of see the rock wall here, and that's the property line of the elementary school. To the south is the new car wash that recently opened, and a vacant commercial <coughs> lot. And across Canazo is a vacant lot that is zoned at A1 apartments and then single family beyond that. Uh, we did have one person attend the Planning and Zoning Commission to ask questions about the difference between C2 and C1. Uh, C2 would allow for bars and lounges and heavy um, auto repair like painting and, and body repair. And C1 allows for more neighborhood friendly uses like restaurants and smaller retail developments. And so. Uh, the applicant's representative, Mr. Conrad Funde, was in attendance and did state that the applicant is in agreement with the C1 zone. And he's also here tonight uh, to take any questions for you. Right. Would anyone from the public like to address uh, item number 12 and 13? <coughs>
recess to council. I will close the public hearing. which is uh, the commercial frontage on uh, Horizon Boulevard. This, the zoning map is not yet been updated, but this was the zoning plan that was submitted uh, for the recent rezoning of, of this particular property. And so the plat encompasses this area here. This is the aerial map and the location map. And the plat, it is quite busy because of the contour lines. So here's, this is a, a zoomed in version of it with the boundary line um, identified. They are proposing four commercial lots uh, with access from a 50 foot private driveway utility and drainage easement. Uh, on January 17th, the Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to recommend approval of this preliminary plat application with the condition that all staff comments be addressed prior to city council action. The applicant has done that. Um, however, one of the staff comments was that that 50 foot easement be recorded prior to the plat being recorded and it be referenced on the plat. And so staff continues to uh, make that recommendation. So uh, staff is recommending approval with the condition that that easement be recorded prior to the plat being recorded. Additionally, staff continues to work with the developer on a developer participation agreement for the uh, maintenance of this pond. Council may recall at last month's meeting when they approved the Horizon Town Center Unit 4 development. Uh, this pond is serving both the residential and the commercial, um, and most of the water entering that pond will be from the commercial development. And so we're working with the developer on uh, the shared costs of the maintenance of that pond. And so we anticipate that, that we'll come back with the final cut at the March meeting currently scheduled to go before planning and zoning at their February 21st meeting. Motion to approve as staff recommendation. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Garcia. And uh, we, we don't know yet what's going to go on. Yes. Right, um, so it, it is for commercial lots. I know people were, some people were anticipating a large uh, box retailer, but we don't <laughs> believe that that's what we built. Michelle, question. Is this going to be C2? Will they be C2 lots, all four? There's C, sorry, yes, they're all C2. Okay. <clears throat> is, it, is there a second? Second. second. Oops. There's a motion and a second. If there are no further questions from the council, please, please call the council. Miller. Sorry. Kittles? 
Another agreement for on-call inspection and plan review services. It's, sim it's very much like other contracts that we have with other inspectors. Some of those have not continued on to provide those services, and so this will be an additional resource for the city to utilize. We anticipate a lot of construction coming in in the next few years. In addition to that, Mr. Gallardo was a, an inspector for Horizon City for 15 years. He recently retired, and so he has expressed interest to come back and provide on-call services, and we welcome him back with open arms. So we hope that council will approve this contract so that we can get him on board to provide these services when needed. I also have an inspector's license. Second. And then motion to approve and a second. This is a, a three-year contract, okay. and then um, we will so renew if, if necessary. Thank you. Please follow the council. Miller? Aye. Quiroz? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Ventilla? Aye. 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 Mayor and Council, the uh, Horizon City staff and the Horizon EDC have identified a need for assistance with uh, identifying funding opportunities and applying for such opportunities. And so um, we interviewed Ms. Borden. Her, her experience um, fits right in line with what we're looking for, and she's familiar with the area. Um, the services would be shared with Horizon City and EDC, and so with the cost. And so um, it's a one-year contract. So we will see how it, it pans out, and, and if both parties are willing to extend, we'll bring another contract forward next year. Um, this still would need to go to the EDC board for approval, and then uh, once it's executed, it'll be one year from that date. And so staff is recommending approval of this one-year contract. Um, happy to answer any questions. Yes, sir. I'm also asking you to there is supposedly going to be significant funding opportunities come down, coming down from Congress, and we need to be ready to respond. Yes, sir, and I agree. Not only in identification, but in, in process of the application. So I think it's critical to, to, this, to the town that we be ready to do what we can to benefit from what, what largess we can get from. <coughs> yes, the federal government. I have a question. Yeah. Is this funding going to be this funding going to be shared with Horizon and also the EDC or? Well, we and we anticipate that it will be different funding categories. So um, any work that she does for Horizon City will be funds that are available to Horizon City, and for the EDC, any funding opportunities that they see will be available to them. Yeah, there may be the, an opportunity to partner. It, uh, you know, it just it. It takes from your job and having to input in grant, and I know Chief McConnell does a lot of grant writing, and, and uh, we really need someone to de be dedicated solely to that. Well, and, and you know that we can't catch every opportunity, but I feel like having someone dedicated to that will help us um, identify more opportunities than staff looking at it and trying to, to find the time to look for that. And funds available for those services will help we have a, a, well, I can speak for myself. Planning has a contract labor uh, budget line item that has a availability for, for funding to get it from there. The EDC, I believe, has a similar uh, budget line item. Motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second? If there are no further questions. Please hold the council. Miller. Aye. Quiroz. Aye. Ortega? Aye. Venteria? Aye. Durán? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Correct. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 19, discussion and action on a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a professional <coughs> services agreement between the town of Horizon City, Texas, and Able City, LLC, for $129,550 to provide architectural design standards for the town of Horizon City's transit oriented <coughs> development, public, and private development. Good evening, 
Council, Terry Quesada, CIP Manager. Uh, this is the agreement that I referenced in the CIP update. Uh, Able City will be providing primarily the architectural guidelines for the transit-oriented development. As we've been discussing the transit-oriented development, it's important for the city to determine what the character of that development is going to be so that it is a unified, cohesive theme. And we want to be able to point to guidelines for the developer so that they know what it is that, those, uh, that, that the city's expectations are. Um, in our discussions and, and negotiations with Able City, they also indicated that they could identify and recommend desired land use changes that align with the town's plans objectives. And so we believe that that is something that works hand in glove with the overarching uh, architectural guidelines. So that is part of the scope that is being brought before you. Uh, we anticipate that the project will take nine months to develop and um, Able City is ready to begin next week. We will issue a, a notice to proceed. We will have to take this agreement also to the TIRC board uh, for their approval as well, um, but we believe that we can get, um, uh, get started on this. And this also provides another tool for the EBC to begin developing uh, the financial toolkit, uh, the economic development toolkit that we also want to have in place for the TOD. So subject to your questions, staff recommends approval of this agreement. Yes, sir. In part of your negotiations, did you discuss, <coughs> is, will there be a public involvement outreach portion of this so Absol that we will have the opportunity to come in? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, there will be public outreach um, and there will be presentations to, um, to various entities so that this is not a surprise for anybody but public outreach is a key component of the scope of work. Yes, sir. Yeah, and this is our, and the council, this is our opportunity to make our mark on this on this community and uh, really oversee that development of the TOD. I'm, I'm excited. I'll be after my term when it's done, but uh, I'm still excited, I'm, and I'm so proud to be a part of that. That's my Just as additional information for the council, there are two open houses that are part of the scope of work and uh, again presentations to the council. Is there a motion on the floor? There's a motion approved. Second. Second. And a second. Please call the council. Miller. Aye. Ortega. Aye. Ortega. Aye. 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 Thank you, council. Thank you, Dr. Tonight, uh, this item is uh, presenting for you the uh, FY 2022 Local Border Security Grant uh, application. This is uh, an application that we have done um, for at least about 12 years, maybe more. And so uh, this is uh, basically an overtime grant, provides uh, assistance, assistance to, uh, to help with local border security uh, and uh, activities for that. There is no match for the, um, the grant and it is beneficial for the community and I certainly would recommend that you consider allowing that proceeding. Okay. Motion to approve and uh, Dan Chief, thank you for such a nice report. It's always condensed it's to the point. Highlights very good stuff about our community, our police department and so forth and I thank you for your services. Thank you. Second. There's a motion to approve and a second. If there are no further questions, please call the count. Miller. DPS officer and myself, we sat on a panel that uh, very detailed and, and uh, pretty lengthy and, uh, 
and the, it was just a pretty dynamic uh, day in, in the process of elimination that we went through uh, to get to our uh, uh, our candidate that we chose to be uh, our next chief of police. And uh, and he's sitting right back there, uh, Marco Vargas, and his, and his family. He's um, he's uh, we get, he's given us an additional agree uh, a, a a conditional agreement. So uh, it's up to the council now to uh, allow me to uh, negotiate the rest of the contract for him, and uh, he'll he'll uh, sit in replace uh, Mike McConnell. A big job, and uh, but he's a, he's up for it. And I, and I'm t as I told the gentleman earlier, I'm totally confident in the person that that, that we've chosen. He's a capable man, and and uh, I'm sure he'll do a wonderful job. I believe that with all my heart. And uh, just so everybody knows, uh, as far as the process goes, uh, just to just a slight recap, we did use a um, an assessment center process that was a day long event um, for the uh, for the applicants. It started at uh, about eight thirty, uh, concluding with the final uh, interview at, at you know four thirty ish or so in, the, in that area. It involved uh, writing exercises analyzing problems uh, that the panel um, got to review and scored those. It involved a, a discussion, a leaderless discussion exercise where uh, all three candidates uh, that were remaining that day um, participated in. And that also uh, provided the, uh, the panel with another, um, another aspect or dimension, I guess, of, uh, of looking at Examining uh, the individuals, and finally the interview itself, which we had uh, about 16 questions that the, uh, the panelists asked and provided a rating. And, uh, and after that, uh, uh, you know, my function uh, was more HR than anything uh, to help just just to make it so that the panelists could come in and do their job and not have to worry about all the paperwork and so forth. And of course, our HR. Coordinator uh, also helped with that too, on the spreadsheets and providing documents and just and, and, you know, going through the process. We did have um, about 50 applicants uh, to start with, and it really whittled itself down uh, to finally one person. Um, but uh, five people were invited to uh, interview. One withdrew. The other one withdrew uh, on the day of leaving the three people, and that is what, uh, what happened on that day. It was a, it was a, it was a good process. I believe it was uh, bias-free, um, and um, these, these are not easy decisions, and I know the gentleman spoke early, you know, about internal, and, and it just, you know, um, it just, it is what it is, and the, the, the scores were what they are. I don't know if Ms. Uh, Corral or, or um, the mayor already spoke and uh, Alderman Miller had anything else to say, but that's, it, it, was, it was a good process. Yes, sir. It was one of the more thorough <coughs> processes I've ever been I've been on a lot of panels before, and this one was, I won't say grueling. Uh, a lot to it. So, uh, no, it was. A, I, I, I would really commend the chief for his process because the process was a really good. One. I'm honored to have been selected to be on the committee. Um, this is the first time I've been a part of a, of a um, process of this magnitude. Um, like Walter had said, it, it was a very um, lengthy process, and I'm glad that I was a part of it. And. Um, we're definitely going to miss you, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, for supporting and for helping us get through that. Is there a motion on the floor? I need a motion for item number 20. I'm going to be done on this. Number 21. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And, and a second. Okay. Please follow the council. Miller? Aye. Kiros? Aye. Ortega? Aye. Venteria? Aye. Durán? Aye. 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 Aye.
good evening, Mike McConnell, police chief. And so this will be my final. So this is the best one. It's so nice. So, um, actually, I thank uh, Lieutenant Dietrich for always doing a great job on providing the uh, the graphics on front. Uh, very nicely, nicely done. And um, we continue to have really good news uh, with our um, our state of crime, I guess, and, and how we approach it. Uh, we do have the lowest uh, rate, crime rate, in, in the county uh, as far as a municipality, and so we're, we're glad about that. We do understand that we, we believe Horizon City is just a special place. Well, we responded to about 20,679 calls, um, and, um, and um, we created 1,038 written incident reports, and that decreased by 29. Um, we saw a pretty good increase of uh, accidents, of about 106, so that would certainly, um, it's not surprising, when you have all of this growth going on, that's that's going to happen. Um, and of course, some of those accidents are pretty minor, and some of them are not. Uh, but, but most of them, uh, you know, a lot of them are barely reportable, but we, we classify them as an accident nonetheless. Uh, aggravated assaults. Uh, simple assault have uh, decreased from 27 to 19. Individuals charged with uh, minor thefts increased from 21 uh, to 29. Those aren't huge numbers, uh, and, but still each one is important. Um, arrest for narcotics dropped 47 to 54 from 54 last year. And uh, driving while under the influence increased from 58 to 62. So as our officers become more tenured, I guess, with more experience, we're able to detect that because we know there's a lot of um, DWI going on, and that's dangerous for the public. And so, but you can read some of the other information. Um, our telecommunication dispatchers, uh, they dispatched 14,492 fire calls, a slight decrease, and uh, they dispatched 20,679 calls for police for a total of um, 35,171 calls, which is an increase of about 627. And of course, COVID has slowed down a lot of things, um, but we're starting now to see an uh, increase in that area. We also pre present the, uh, the annual um, uh, racial profile report as required by Texas law, and we have, uh, it's computerized, thankfully, uh, because they collect an awful lot of data we would not want to have to do that by hand. It just would be, I'm not sure how you would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so every traffic stop is recorded, whether it's um, uh, a warning or a written, uh, it is documented, and then we can find out a lot of information. We did not have any uh, complaints of uh, racial profiling uh, filed with the office, and that report's been submitted to people. So other than that, there's a lot of good, good information you can see in here. And, and and of course, some of this comes from the monthly reports that you get, but uh, there are so many other things that, uh, that you can look at as far as some crime prevention activities and officer training uh, and so forth. And uh, so with that, I would ask for your approval of, of both of those reports. There's a motion approved and a second. Are there any further questions or comments? I just have a comment. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Um, being that this is your final I, um, this report, I know it's emotional too. I know it's very emotional for you. And um, I just would like to personally thank you for your dedication to our, our community, to the council, to the staff, to our staff and the city, <coughs> um, to myself as well. So um, thank you. You're going to be you're going to be missed. Thank you. I have a comment, chief. 
You did say <coughs> one of your comments <coughs> that Horizon is special. Yes. It is special. I think that's why everybody sitting in here works here or elected by the community. Because we have a special service that we provide for our community, our service, our constituents, because it is special. And I thank you for making it that much more special, sir. You're welcome. And I, I think I can speak proudly, mm -hmm. along with the staff and city council, that you will remain with us in a special place. And thank you. Says, honoring your service presented to Michael McConnell, Town of Horizon City Chief uh, Police Chief, in appreciation for over 12 years of loyal and dedicated service to the people of the, of the Town of Horizon City. We, the members of the City Council, City staff, present this to you in recognition of your many years of sacrifice and service. You will always have a home here. We wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. October 2009 to March 2022. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, you came here and uh, you just turned this this uh, police department around. You've made it. You, you've got brought us so many certifications and and uh, just brought a lot of pride and, and innovations and. Man, I, I tell you, it was, you really come in and shook it up. And I can't thank you enough for, <laughs> for being the, the, the police Bless officer you. that you are. On, uh, on a personal level, I can't thank you enough for the contribution that you made to me personally. As a Christian brother, your example of a follower of Jesus Christ, I want to be like you. And I thank you very much for all that you've done for me, for our town, and for me as well. And Carmen, Thank you very much. I love you both, and I'm going to miss you a lot. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Adicio. Oh, Andre. Are you with the newspaper? No, sir. Oh, okay. No, I was just wondering because you're videotaping us and all that. Oh, I have a YouTube channel, but I'm just some guy. Oh, okay. What do you do? Um, I don't have any fancy job, nothing. No, no, but just do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but... Uh, right now, I don't even have a job right at the moment. So. Oh, okay. My yeah. name is Adicio. I'm the purchasing agent. Oh, you work for the city? Yeah. Oh, very nice to meet you, sir. 
And uh, maybe I'll, I'll do a open records request and find out more about your uh, department. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's not much to know, but we'll give you whatever you, you need if that's the case. Oh, I, I always like to follow numbers and see what's being purchased. And I mean, you know, just see, see what the city's doing. Nothing, nothing like, like I'm looking for anything bad or anything. Just, yeah. Very good. But thanks for your service. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. No, I don't think they, or actually, no, they do have a city staff member that does video recording. Yeah. Nope. Oh, I have, yeah, no problem. Have a good night, guys. Excuse me, are you one of the women on uh, that county board you're talking about, the Ascarate Park? Um, so I'm one of the commissioners on the commissioner's court, yes. And so 
one of the items that we're discussing right now is uh, the parks master plan for the county, and it has to do with us got at the park. Yes. And like they were taking off the two dollar fee. Yes, we just approved that yesterday, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's gone. Yes. Okay, that was my uh, question. It goes into effect April first. Okay, because uh, I know somebody had said like you guys were trying to get the word out, so. Yes. We want to encourage more people to come visit us at it, and so we didn't want the fee to be a barrier to that. Right. So that's why we we're removing the fee. So as of April first, you don't have that two dollar um, gate fee for regular use of the park. So more, hopefully, more families will come out and enjoy it. Yeah, that sorry. sounds great. And I'm sorry, um, no, uh, I'm not familiar with all the politicians. Your name is. Uh... I'm Iliana Oyin. So I'm the county commissioner that actually represents this whole East El Paso area, all the way down to the Mission Valley. Okay, and but you you're part of a certain district. Precinct three. Precinct, right? Precinct three. So it's all of this east side part of the county, all the way down to the Mission Valley. Okay, and uh, who's this woman? This is Gabby. She works in my office. Okay. So we're gonna give you our card. All right. If you need any yes. information, questions you have, you can contact me. Please feel free to call. Us. I really appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Drive safe. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good
Hello. Are we still running hot? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, What's you running there? Is this a 7 Pro? That 13? is a 13. <gasps> sorry. I, I don't want a big zoom in on my ugly face. <laughs> I can turn it off if you want. It's not a big deal. Oh, no, it's cool. Okay. I like the color. It's a baby blue one, huh? You know, I can't even remember. I quickly put on my outer box. I mean, oh. <laughs> So what's new with you? Um, I'm not in jail. Well, that's good. <laughs> Is it okay if I turn the camera to you, or did you not? Um, no, I don't want to be on the like, no, gross. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. I don't want to hear the comments. Well. Pass. Right, I got you. So, uh, like I said, if you need me to turn off, just let me know. Well, sure. Turn it off. Okay.